Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, Lionel here. And give me a second, let me adjust. <sighs> and I do have a, uh, a fragrance review, sort of um, just an in-house type of, type of uh, fragrance review. And what I mean by in-house is um, I've never really gotten the opportunity uh, to wear this fragrance out uh, just around the house, uh, mostly because um, it came in a vial uh, like this, which was probably about half full. So I never really had a chance to really uh, wear it out, but I have worn it on my skin uh, about three different occasions, and I really want to get this video out uh, for Robert. So with that said, uh, let's get into it. Uh, what I have for you today is called Immortal Metal. It is from the house of Sebastian, and as you may know, uh, he is a YouTube guy. Uh, who has been around quite a bit uh, named Robert Elder. Uh, Sebastian uh, comes from the name of his, uh, I think his dog. Um, so I love the name. Uh, first of all, let's get, let's give a hats off to that. Uh, Sebastian is, is, is such a strong uh, yet familiar non-popist type of name. When you think of Sebastian, you just, it's, you know, it sort of has a, a history surrounding it. Um, not a lot of uh, males are named Sebastian today. So I, I sort of like the classic uh, feel to the name of the house. I think that was a really good job there. Um, now on to the scent. Uh, this is um, Robert's first scent that he released, I, I guess, to the public. Um, I have been uh, getting different samples of different fragrances like uh, Coffee Royal, um, Kiss of the Vampire, Urban Legend. There's a few things he has out there. Um, that he hasn't released yet. Uh, so Immortal Metal, Immortal Metal is his very first fragrance release to the public for sale. So let's get into Immortal Metal. Uh, Immortal Metal, uh, the notes are as follows. Uh, violet, blackberry, benzoin, leather, vanilla, patchouli, cedar, vetiver, and green grass. So that's what you have. Um, and if you go to, I'll, I'll put a link below, but on uh, IndieSense.com where he sells it, which is a, I think a subsidiary of or a branch of uh, LuckyScent.com. So I think there's an extension there, which is, I think, LuckyScent.com is an extension of the scent bar in L.A. So with that said, uh, it says right underneath it, I mean, I'm looking up at IndieScent now, is it's fresh grass and violets that are sharply contrasted with leather, patchouli, and vetiver. So that's how he describes the scent on uh, the... Website, Indie Scents, I'll uh, put a link below. Uh, the price point is really, really good. Um, I think the concentration, I think he said, was above 20%. So it is an EDP. Um, and not only is it EDP, uh, it comes at 100 mil, which is the only size, at $75 uh, for 100 mil, which is, uh, for all intents and purposes, much cheaper than the average designer. Um, 100 mil that I've encountered over the last, I don't know, forever outside of like going to Express or maybe Banana Republic or something. Um, but if you go into Dillard's or Macy's, uh, $75 is very, very reasonable for a, uh, especially a high concentration EDP. So let's get into what it smells like. So again, the nose are violet, blackberry, benzoin, leather, vanilla, patchouli, cedar, vetiver, and green grass. It opens with a very fresh green grass right I mean just like I think as he described it you're 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 in the meadow right you're you're in a valley and you know all the ice has just melted you're maybe in early May you know in the mountains and there's just this blast of green grass just floating around everywhere um, uh, I keep smelling it, so I just want to make sure. So that's what it opens with. Um, and this green grass does pretty much stay uh, throughout the scent, but it dominates the opening. I'm talking about that's how what it opens as. Um, within about a couple of minutes, maybe, um, the blackberry joins. And it's the blackberry sort of has a uh, almost a candied blackberry uh, type of uh, aroma to it. Uh, it's not really... You know, when I think of black, it's not jammy like, uh, you know, kerosene's raspberry or um, or if you think of um, uh, 
I think it may be Blackberry or, or something, and one of those uh, Killians that sort of has that, you know, it, it's not like a, a creamy, you know, thick Blackberry, sort of a more of a juicy, like you just juice the Blackberry type of Blackberry. So, um, sort of has this, you know, juice, sweet juice, you know, kitty juice type Blackberry note going on. Um, so that, that joins... And it really sweetens up the grass. So you have this this very rich green grass and this, you know, fairly sweet blackberry note um, that, that are just, you know, merging together. And as that is happening, the blackberry, I mean, the um, uh, the 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 uh, violet comes in and sort of gives it a purple feel. I mean, it feels sort of, you know, purple and green, if if you can understand, which is. You know, it, it has a, such a unique, um, a unique combination of notes, and I and I and I'll get into who would like this. So that that's sort of what's going on, and and that's okay. I'm actually sort of enjoying the opening. Um, it, it's the heart that really starts to make me, you know, think about the fragrance, second guess the fragrance. To to really be honest. Um, as I'm smelling it, you know, then this leather, patchouli, vetiver thing, the woods come in, it starts to get a bit woodsy, uh, the, the the sweetness of the blackberry sort of pulled back, but this, this vanilla and benzoin maybe joins it and, and sort of gives it a, you know, a, a, a glaze sweetness, you know, think of the sweetness that you get in, in um, uh, Ode Bow, you know, think of that type of sweetness maybe. Uh, not not a candy sweet, not a honey sweet, uh, not a sugar sweet, but just this this feeling of sweetness, right? So that comes along, you know, the blackberry is dying down, the grass is sort of in the background, and the violet comes up, you know, the violet is starting to pick up steam, you know, and it's a purple violet, it's not a, it is a very floral violet, you know, unlike the violet you get in Green Irish Tweed, or even a violet I get in, uh, in it, well, it's, it's sort of black violet violet. So if you've ever smelled black violet, sort of has that violet, very purple flower, very floral, um, you know, not a creamy violet, but a, but a, a, a thick, uh, you know, floral violet. So um, as that happens, you know, th this leather, patchouli, woodsy thing is going on, and sorry about the lighting, um, starts to come along and... The fragrance really just, I, I don't know where it is at this point, right? Because it sort of opens fresh, a little juicy, a little floral. And then it transitions to some darkness, almost as if, you know, someone comes along with like, a, you know, an earthy or like, you know, a bag of soil, you know, as you're in this and just starts to pour it down and, and pour it around this, you know, this, this fruity, grassy thing. It's like, you know, you have grass and you have blackberry. And then somebody just comes with this thick bag of soil and just dumps it right on the side. And then, you know, and as that's transpiring, this transition into the heart and the base, this leather comes in and sort of gives it this, it, it gets quite artistic. I, I mean, and, and that's about as honest as I can put it. Um, I really start, um, I, 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 I'm okay with the opening. I'm, I'm not head over heels with the opening, but I, I like it. It's cool. Um. But that heart and the bass comes in and I just start to really get confused on, on what I'm dealing with here, what the fragrance was really set out to do. Because um, when I think of immortal metals, I just I just think of a more springy, more something. Set. I'm not saying you can't rock this in the spring. I, this may be a very good all around. Uh, but the vetiver leather patchouli kind of gives it this smoky incense vibe. So just think you kind of have this green grass. You sort of have this sweeten you know blackberry type of thing you have this very bright heavy floral violet with these dark earthy notes to come in and just sort of change the pace almost you know it's like you know it's like a, a football game and you have two running backs you got a ground and pound and you got this guy who just runs out to the outside they're just changing up the pace bam 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 you know just putting the defense back on his heels like okay we don't we know you know, then they throw them both in the backfield and you don't know what's going to happen. So I sort of get that feeling like I just don't know what to expect from this fragrance. Um, 
you know, what do I think about it? Um, based off what I have already, um, I have a violet that I really like, which is black violet. Uh, I, you know, the price is significantly different. Uh, you may want to give this a sniff. I mean, if you like black violet but think it's maybe too too expensive, you may want to give this ex a, a sniff. But it really, you know, I, I'm just saying the violets are similar. Outside of that, I really don't, I've never encountered a fragrance that really like this. But it smells like something Tom Ford would do. You know, it smells like something one of the less popular, less, you know, received Tom Fords would probably do. It smells like it could have been actually part of Tom Ford's uh, latest line that he just released with, you know, all this other stuff. He just had, I can't even think of the name of Cafe Rose and all those. That's what it really smells like. Um, so if you're intrigued by that, then I think you should go for this. Um, here, here's what I think. I think most males may find this just a bit too floral for them. I think guys like Dan, guys like, you know, guys who don't really like the florals may find a problem with this. But if you're a fan of Black Violet, if you're a fan of you know, maybe Black Orchid or something along those lines, you may want to give this a sniff. I think it, I think it may serve you well. Just at least smell it out, right? Can't, can't hurt you from smelling it out. Um, me personally, would I buy this? I, I wouldn't. Um, this would be a pass for me as a personal buy, um, just because of what I currently have in my collection and what this does on my skin. Uh, and that's another, you know, that's another note. I mean, this may do something different on your skin, but on my skin, it just there's just way too many different con contrasting things. That's you know, floral seem to really blossom on my skin. So it could be the florals with this smoky vibe, with this blackberry and this grass, and it's just, they're all fighting, and my nose and my brain just isn't really receiving it well. So um, overall, I would tell you this is a great price. Um, overall, I would tell you, there's I, I, when you encounter this, you're probably going to say, I've never smelled anything like this, and that could be either good or bad. Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, Sebastian, the house, and Robert Elder has great, great potential. Um, I think he's going to do very, very well. Uh, for me, I would probably pass on this. I have gotten the opportunity to smell Cafe Royal, uh, Coffee Royal or Cafe Royal, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous coffee scent. And if he keeps it at the $75 price point, it's not even a question if I would buy it. I don't care if he releases it in July, right? Um, that's being bought. Uh, Urban Legend is sort of a, uh, you know, sort of a, a mix between La Dandy and 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 spirity double vanilla um, from uh, Guerlain sort of has that type of pure mauve, boozy vanilla type fragrance. Uh, really good quality, very very velvety. Um, so I think he has potential. I, I think I'm definitely going to stick around and see uh, and visit some of his other fragrances. But I will tell you now personally uh, to Robert and, and to the reviewers uh, and to the viewers of my you know page that I, I me personally I, I'm not okay. I wouldn't get this one. So. Um, you know, it won't be the first time or the last time, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but hats off to you, Robert, uh, for fulfilling your dreams and, and going with it and sticking with it uh, through all of the, the, the different obstacles. Um, hats off to Lucky Sin and Indie Sense for believing in them. Um, and, you know, great work um, on a fragrance. It's just something that I wouldn't personally uh, uh, dedicate my dollars to. So uh, that's it. I greatly appreciate it. You guys have a great one. Peace.